This is a two-piece flanged NC150 CF8M ball valve, 316 stone to steel, PTFE seats, and it has a spring return actuator. We have in different sizes, these ones from 50 to 200 mil. This one has a Namur solenoid valve mounted here, and you can see the indicators. This is actually a sprung normally open. We can spring them normally closed. You can see through there. And if I just rotate this around, you can see the API 607 certification tag and also it's lasered on the body here. The actuator is a SR125 in this particular case, but it's a spring return unit. The double acting would be the same. Just double, acting. double acting is exactly the same. Um, slightly different size actuator, but exactly the same. Uh, unit, a combination, ISO mounted, pad mounted, direct actuation on here. You can also get the same unit, ANSI 150 to ANSI 300, 15 millimeter to 200 millimeter. You can see on here the Namur, if I just operate this, the unit goes around, and if I let it go, it goes back. Now the double acting function is exactly the same. Press this down, brings it back. This particular one is a spring return unit, so if I lock this down, and the manual override has a facility locked down, and I go and disconnect the air, which I can do just here, makes a bit of a noise, you can see the spring closes it back. Let's see, it closes it to the, you see the spring closes it to the normally open function. And depending on how it's pipe connected, of course, it can be either normally open or normally closed. Put the air back on again. And the, the actuator is returned to its spring compressed position. And then I can just operate the override. And it uh, goes back to its at rest position, in this case, normally open. Spring return, which these actuators are adjustable, the stops for the open and closed position. They're preset here at the factory. If necessary, they can be adjusted. The actuator top indicator can come off and we can put the Namur, uh, the Namur based position indicators on here, or a controller to give us proportional control, depending on what the valve application is. And how the Namur operates, we have air which goes into both sides of the actuator. For spring return and double acting, we put air into both sides of the actuator. So the spring is actually an emergency closed, but we put air into open and closed with the spring. The reasoning is that the actuator is actually, in fact, double acting with springs, and we get clean air, filtered air, going into both sides of the actuator. If we use a three-way valve and it just operates in one direction, we're likely to suck contaminated, dusty air into the opposite side, which doesn't do the valve any good. So is that a rack and pinion actuator? This is a rack and pinion actuator. In the top goes rack and pinion with the pistons on either end. And this is electrical solenoid, which is then wired up, and you can then, has the LED on here to operate the unit. We can also have these in a double solenoid or we can actually have them in another different function as well. Yep. This is the investment cast NC150 and also available in NC300, fire safe two piece ball valve. I've got a breakdown here to show how the internals operate. First of all, we've got the ISO pad mounting here for the actuators to go onto. We can accommodate uh, double acting, spring return, pneumatic, and also electric and also a gearbox operation on these, and up to certain sizes, manual lever operation. Internally inside here, we have the PTFE seats. In fact, they're still in the, in the valve, but I have one from a, a repair kit, a, a new kit that shows you how they operate. There's the seat, and which has a little groove 
coming through here. You can see little grooves as a, a bleed grooves through the side. They're CNC PTFE. All CNC PTFE to a high tolerance. The ball itself over here, there's a highly polished face and has the groove here where the mating drive shaft goes into. You can see on the drive shaft there is a detent here, a PTFE thrust wash, another detent. There is a Viton seal and the graphite impregnated crush washers go here. You can see where the markers, that um, just the stain mark from the graphite. And in fact, on the breakdown, the graphite seats are still internally, but I have a set just here from a repair kit to show you. The detent is to go with the FireSafe API 607 certification, so when it goes into there, it makes contact for anti-static, and likewise for the going through the stem from the shaft, that detent or ball valve will rotate inside that head. You probably see through here the anti there's the crash washers, the graphite, and inside there is the ball where that detent will rotate inside as the valve rotates. Bright on seal is a a backup for a bubble tight um, below the graphite chevron seals, and they are held in place over here. If we go down to this assembly. There is a, a nut at the very top of this whole assembly with a, a locking face. Then comes a set of Belleville washers, which we have here. They're slightly coned washers, which you may or may not be able to see here, but you can see a little gap internally. And they get compressed down and give a, a live loaded packing, so that there's a consistent thrust on the actual thrust washer, unlike a gland which you screw down and has variable thrusts. This one, this little part here is slides up and down the shaft and gives the constant thrust onto the Belleville washers. Belleville washers themselves is a set of graphite washers. If I just open those the up. Chevron. Sorry. Chevron. The Chevron washers themselves, yeah, the thrust comes from the Belleville washers through this slider and the chevron washers and CNC machined and if we open them up they're actually got a little cone face on them and a recess on the other side so that cone face goes into the recess and likewise with the second washer concept is that this sits against the face internally inside the stem and the thrust washer goes on here any compression of these crush washers will force the the chevron out to seal on the internal and external part of that shaft. API 607 certification is around the neck, as you can see. That's the certification tag and the actual API is also lasered. If I rotate this around to here on the side, in between the two faces, there is a raised section over here where one half of the split body slides into the other. The ball will then go and rotate on the PTFE seat. And if we move over to this other unit, you can see the graphite seal is still in place here which gives a seal between the two bodies.